Throughout this video, we're going to present to you a list of ingredients to a product that can be found at your local grocery store. I want you to try to guess what the product is, and I will reveal it at the end. We're starting off with water, straight from the tap, with both chlorine and fluoride, just the way the manufacturer made this product. Next, we have dehydrated corn syrup. This isn't particularly bad, just sugar which has been made from corn. Next, we're going to mix both whey and casein in order to make milk protein isolate. Casein has been regarded as a carcinogen in the China study by Mr. Colin Campbell. The risk of cancer is ignored. Casein has been documented to break down in the stomach to produce the peptide casomorphin. Casomorphin is known to aggravate the symptoms of autism in many studies. It then releases a histamine in the body, causing allergy problems. Whey is generally unharmful and helps to raise insulin levels, which may prove helpful to people with diabetes. So we combine them together to make milk protein isolate. Next up is Mortirella aplina oil, otherwise known as ARA or arachidonic acid. It is slightly yellow colored. Some of this is essential for your health, but it can cause inflammation in even moderate amounts. Lots of people are sensitive to this, and in those people, it can cause chronic fatigue, poor and restless sleep, difficulty awakening or grogginess upon awakening, brittle hair, thin, brittle nails, constipation, dry, flaking skin, and rashes. Lab animals who are injected with arachidonic acid are dead in moments. Now we have Cryptocadinium coney oil, or DHA, which is another slightly yellow acid. This is made from a type of algae, but is generally supposed to be good for you. Alright, now we have the mono and deglycerides. That's right, the old silent killer, hydrogenated oils. All of these have been made from a glyceride bonded to a glycol. Glycol is used in biodiesel manufacture and is used to produce nitroglycerin, which is an essential ingredient of smokeless gunpowder and various munitions. Now, here is so lucky thing. This is an emulsifier, which helps in the development of the brain as required by the FDA and infant formulas. Here is carrageenan. There is evidence from studies performed on rats, guinea pigs and monkeys which indicates that degraded carrageenan may cause ulcerations in the gastrointestinal tract and gastrointestinal cancer. Consumption of carrageenan may have a role in intestinal inflammation and possibly inflammatory bowel disease. It's been refined from a red seaweed before it gets to this point. Now for the vitamins. This is to make the product healthy. We have a red mole palmitate or vitamin A. These are all synthetic and therefore cannot be absorbed properly to the body. But it's good for marketing. Next is vitamin D3. Vitamin E acetate. yellow liquid thiamine hydrochloride
biotin or vitamin H. The B vitamins, we've mixed all these together. Next is folic acid. Not needed in children, but it's added anyway. Mm. Mm. A clear liquid. Mm -hmm. mm. and vitamin C or sodium ascorbate. At this stage, we're going to create the product of choline chloride. It entails three ingredients, ethyl oxide, hydrochloric acid, and trimethylamine. Although ethyl oxide is usually bubbled into this in its gas form, we're simply going to add it in its liquid form. It is usually a highly flammable, colorless gas which is used to sterilize medical equipment. True methylamine is similar to ammonia, only stronger and smells really fishy. And hydrochloric acid is the main component of gastric acid and is highly corrosive. Here is calcium carbonate, used medically as an antacid or a calcium supplement. Now we have magnesium chloride. We use magnesium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and ammonia for this. We had to make this earlier because it's too dangerous to do indoors due to the gas that it releases. I mentioned hydrochloric acid earlier as a strong, highly corrosive acid. These are heated with ammonia, but they create hydrogen gas. The end result is magnesium chloride, which is used as a de-icer by state highway departments. Now we are adding ferrous sulfate, which is being used as an iron supplement. It has been made by iron dipped into sulfuric acid. Due to being synthetic, it is much more difficult for the body to absorb, and a slight overdose can easily cause, cause death. This next one also has sulfuric acid, which is clear. You can never get enough sulfuric acid in a diet, can you? We're now going to demonstrate this one by combining zinc with sulfuric acid in order to create zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate is also used in fertilizers and pesticides.
Next is manganese sulfate. It is used to treat manganese deficiency, which is something which has never been reported in humans. But hey, this is another excuse to get some more sulfuric acid. This one has already been mixed earlier. It is suspected to be neurotoxic. Now for cupric sulfate. Prepared by sulfuric acid on copper metal or cupric oxide. This is highly poisonous to algae and almost all plants. Self-production of this has actually been restricted. It is used in insecticides, fungicides, algaecides and copper plating. Here is sodium citrate. It is the salt from citric acid. Used as a preservative in this and many other foods. And potassium citrate used in the prevention and treatment of kidney stones. Here is potassium iodide. It is used for nuclear emergencies. Electrolysis of potassium chloride yields potassium hydroxide, which readily absorbs moisture. Potassium iodide is produced by the reaction of iodine and potassium hydroxide. Next, we are adding potassium hydroxide. This is mainly used commercially as a cleaner. You'll find it in carpet cleaning degreases, tile cleansers, and even in drain and pipe cleaners. Now, we have sodium selenite. All male and female rats exposed to 60 parts per billion died. The final mean body weights of rats exposed to 30 parts per million sodium selenite and of rice exposed to 30 or 60 parts per million were up to 29% lower than those of the controls. The final mean body weights of rats and mice exposed to 32 parts per million were 17 to 54% lower than those of the controls. This data, which was gathered from rats, is ignored in the case of humans and given to them regardless. Now for taurine. This wouldn't have been a bad ingredient if it weren't chemically and synthetically bastardized. Our recipe would be complete after blending and heating. So, after all of our ingredients are combined, what do we have? infant formula.